So we've heard this news overnight that Sanofi plans to stop research on diabetes. There seems to be plenty of evidence of other drugs companies turning towards oncology and maybe away from other things. Is the competitive environment getting easier right now? Well, in diabetes, we believe there's an uh, unmet medical need for, for people living with diabetes. But of course, it takes uh, innovation to really fulfill that market. We believe that we are uh, one of the biggest uh, innovators in that space. And we believe that we also have a pipeline for the future so we can keep innovating to, to address that uh, unmet need from, from patients. But do you see more, co more competition sort of ebbing away here? Is, is more of the field being left to you? Well, you can say that there are a number of, of categories. For long, we competed in the insulin category where uh, Sanofi was a leader for, for many years. Now, increasingly, uh, growth comes from new uh, types of medicines. For instance, the GLP-1-based treatments, where it's uh, Noronoisk and Lili that's, that's leading. And Sanofi did not manage to, uh, to you know, jump on that early enough. So it, it's all about innovation and the value you bring to patients uh, and addressing the need still half of all living with type 2 diabetes is not in good control and needs better medicines. Okay, Matt. Well, for, for markets, Lars, also it's about growth and profitability. On your Capital Markets Day a couple of weeks ago, we noticed the shares fell um, 4%, probably on disappointment with your U.S. outlook. Why do you think that took investors by surprise that, um, that you see flattish growth in the U.S.? Well, we see that over a matter of a few years, we're actually turning around 70% of our business in the U.S., so from being insulin-based to being GLP-1-based. And as long as we, uh, we have a, a big part of our business in insulin, we are impacted by the declining insulin prices in the U.S. But gradually, we'll be turning that around, and we see a very strong dynamics in the GLP-1 space. And the disappointment you spoke to was that we uh, announced that we still see price competition uh, and price erosion in, in the insulin space, and that's what is impacting our short term. But we are very positive in terms of the momentum we can get back in our US business based on, on GLP-1 based innovation. I know you're also positive about um, innovation in the hemophilia, uh, in the hemophilia space. What's your strategy look like in that area? And um, what kind of innovation, you know, gene editing business do you see yourself moving into? Yeah, short term, we are rolling out uh, a broad portfolio of, of products. We are launching two long acting products in the hemophilia A and hemophilia B category. And we made it a, a deal recently to get into gene editing. Uh, so we believe that there's an opportunity also down the road to, to bring innovative uh, medicines in hemophilia. And I would also just like to underline that we also have a big uh, obesity business and we guided at this capital market day that we expect to more than double our obesity business uh, before getting to 2025. So we, are, we are have a number of, of businesses to uh, base our growth on. On, on haemophilia, does M&A play any kind of role? Are you looking at other existing businesses on that front? Yeah, we have announced that in our biofarm business we are looking to complement our in-house innovation by, by external innovation. You could say the Bluebird bio deal we did was one such a, an example. We have done a partnership with Dyserna. So we are actively looking at what can we get in of uh, both technologies, but also potential pipeline assets to complement the growth from our in-house R&D efforts. Where do you see the, you know, clearly we, um, we've seen for years now a huge diabetes problem in massive markets like India uh, also in the US clearly we've seen for years now a big obesity story in the US do you see these problems moving across to other regions that were previously unaffected and can you get a foothold in a, a market like Europe for example if you see obesity and diabetes growing to be Indian US level problems here yeah, that's a good point. We just saw the WHO come out with revised estimates for people, number of people living with diabetes, and it went from uh, 425 million people to 460 million people. You have 650 million people living with obesity. So that's a huge market to address. And it's interesting to see that where we started by selling our obesity medicine in the US, it's actually now coming to the rest of the world. Uh, and we grew our obesity uh, franchise by 50% uh, after the first three quarters of this year. So that's a huge uh, issue to, to deal with. And unless you tackle the challenge of obesity, ideally by prevention, but if you cannot prevent, you have to, to treat with you know, lifestyle, uh, 
chains and, uh, and, uh, and also medicines. Unless you deal with that, obesity is a leading cause of diabetes, cancers and a number of other cardiovascular diseases, which causes a huge challenge to society and a huge cost to society. So we need to be, do, we need to be doing a better job in both preventing and also treating those for whom it's, it's too late to prevent. If we uh, sit here in the, U here in the UK, uh, Lars, as we are just a couple of days away from a UK election, the NHS and the provision of health care is part of the conversation here. Um, after the election, it could be that we're in a situation where we talk about a UK-US trade deal and the NHS might, or medical provision might or might not be part of that conversation. We'll see. As a European uh, uh, medical business, how do you watch that US-UK trade deal to make sure you still have the role that you want to play? To be honest, I'm not overly concerned about that. All countries I visit uh, are concerned about the healthcare system. So that's, that's what's on close on mind for, yes. for all people and, and likewise in the UK. So I, I'm not overly concerned about that. I think there are different healthcare systems in the US and Europe. It's structured differently, but I don't think you can just kind of course cross-fertilize that uh, overnight. So I think it'll be a relative stable environment uh, also going forward.